guys, it's just here, and welcome to another video. Today we're doing another story, and this one will be a few parter because I'm not about to read 13 chapters all at once. <laughs> this will probably be the first part of The Legend of the Sea Doggo, another after the book story that I wrote. It's like it didn't need to be written, but yeah, it's just fun thing I wanted to do. Which is fine. If I want to do fun things, I can do fun things. You know? Everybody likes to do fun stuff. Especially when it comes to a story. Should probably get started then, I guess. There's nothing left to say. Except that it's... You can probably guess who it's about. Okay. There in the description. <laughs> but I won't say in case you don't know. But you probably will figure it out. Maybe in this chapter, maybe in this part, or maybe not. It depends on how long these chapters are. Some of them are longer than others, but some are pretty short. Let's get into it. Chapter 1. The sound of a helicopter could be heard overhead. The sound of the brooders roaring with ray, rage was, that was far beyond understanding. The machine was fairly large, and it had been flying around a small clearing on a hill with a small two-story home at its peak. At the base of the hill was a winding river with a wooden bridge leading to the other side. The area below seemed awfully quiet and still, as if there wasn't a single soul about, except there was. The copter was there for a reason. So it had been for months now. At least a couple of more. <laughs> Silence continued below as the copter hovered overhead. No doubt that they knew there was someone hiding from them. Knew a YouTuber everyone nearby. Whoever they were had hidden themselves well. Too afraid to let out a sound lest they be spotted by the monstrous machine above. Suddenly there was a rustle of some bushes and of some bushes near the woods movement the copter failed to, to spot it's not stop spot <laughs> sneaking behind those bushes with a young dog with white fur and gray markings he was very stealthy with his movements not sure what else he should do the dog continued to watch what was happening overhead the copter finally stopped circling the area they hovered for a long moment a moment passed the door opened from the machine and ropes fell down to the grassy ground below. Should he run for it? How could he know that he could trust these people? They'd been spying on him for who knows how long, and he didn't like it one bit. He watched downward the three men slid down the rope and landed on their feet, but on his shoe. It looked as if they had been doing this kind of thing for a long while. Perhaps they had. Do you think he's still there here somewhere? One of the men asked simply, as he glanced around the surroundings. Viciously. He's probably cowering in his house. The second man chuckled. There's no use in hiding where Mr. A is concerned. We'll find him. Make sure no haste about it. Mr. A? Was that their leader? Why did the men want to see why did the man want to see him? He had done nothing to even anger these people. He had been living in peace in his small home for years. Why has he shown up here now? What could he do about it? Is the portal ready for departure? The third man grunted, and he glanced up at the copter wearily. We'll worry about that when we get to it, the first man said, brushing off the statement. True, but we have to find him first, the third man mused. Well, let's just check the house. It's most likely where he's hiding anyway. It's like a game of hide and seek. <laughs> the dog's heart was racing as he watched the men walk into his house, not even bothering the knock as they barged right in. Perhaps they didn't want him to get away. Problem was, he'd been smart enough not to linger in his home. He was glad he wasn't trapped in those men. He had a chance to get away. Whatever, whoever these men were, where would he go, though? That came to him amongst the raising questions in his mind. The men had mentioned a portal. If he could use that to escape, that would mean he would leave his home. Was it better than getting caught, though? The men wouldn't stop hunting until they found him. He would rather that not happen if he could help it. Silently, 
The young canine snuck away from the bushes and disappeared into the woods, running as fast as he could, daring not to turn around for fear that someone was potentially following him. His mind continued to swirl with questions, most of which he didn't know the answers to. The worrying one was the fact that he didn't have an idea where the bottle was. He was just running towards the machine had been coming from for the past months. He assumed it had to lead to the direction, since how else would the men get to where he lived? A few moments passed, coming up nothing, turning up nothing as trees continued to remain on either side of him. They ran over damp dirt, dry twigs, and that snapped whenever he coincidentally stepped on one. As he continued through, as he continued though, he could begin to see what appeared to be a clearing of ahead. Hope filled him as he forced himself to run faster, not wanting to slow down in the slightest bit. He had to be getting close to something. Maybe someone could help him. It didn't take him long before he exited the cluster of trees surrounding him onto a clearing, which wasn't fairly big, but it was big enough to hold a structure that, that he could see before him. It seemed to be a rectangular form of what looked like it would be another portal, except it wasn't. The blocks were too bright and light emitting from it was white, swirling white sparkles emitting from it. This was a portal that the men had been must, must been talking about, which probably meant that they were close. Knowing he did not have much time, Doc went over to the portal and examined it quickly. There was a small box on the portal that seemed to have random numbers that he assumed leading to wherever the portal would be taking anyone past its glowy interior. He nervously looked over his shoulder as he debated whether or not he should go through the portal. He knew the men had to be close, but how close? How could he be sure that he wouldn't fall into another one of their traps? Could he adjust the portal and transport himself somewhere else? Where to, to though? Should he risk it? Was it better than being trapped with these men? He hoped so. He took a deep breath, mustering up the courage as he pressed a button on the machine and noticed the numbers scramble around rapidly, stopped on a different set of coordinates. Surely this would give him a chance to get away and find some way to find help. Would anyone believe him, though? He wasn't sure. Staying here wasn't an option at this moment. He turned towards the portal, marveled by its glow that it, it illuminated, wondering where it would take him. His moment of awe was rudely interrupted, however, when he heard the sound of shouting and running feet. He instinctively jumped through the portal. Before his thoughts had any time to process, what was going on before, behind him? He was gone from this world. Away from those men. For now, anyway. That was good. Hopefully, he would find a lucky discovery on the other side. Or he would find more trouble instead. Not knowing was hard. But he would be ready for it whenever it might be. And we're at... 8 minutes. <laughs> Let's continue. Jeff to do. The dog felt the sensation of falling at the white noise. As white noise filled his ears, he couldn't be. Sh he wasn't sure how he should feel about this. He felt as if his whole world was spinning and turning, like he was being torn to pieces and forced back together, an incomplete mess. Nothing seemed right, and it made him feel very uncomfortable. Even in the discomfort, though, he could also feel peace, a sensation of welcoming cheeriness that he couldn't explain. Like he was flying, just as much as he was falling. This felt really weird. <laughs> it amazed him. Just as the moment seemed to last forever, though, it unfortunately had to come to an end as he tumbled onto the green grass on the other side. He sat up with a groan as he looked around his surroundings, seeing trees on every side except up ahead, where he could see a glimpse of a birch and spruce checkered path. Where exactly was he? Where had the portal taken him to? He wasn't sure. He didn't take it didn't take him long before he was able to recover from the dizzy queasiness that the portal had given him. As he stumbled to his feet, heading towards the path, feeling it would possibly lead him to some sort of civilization. Maybe they would have some answers. Or at least give him a place to stay until he found the answers that he needed. Away from those guys and figure out how to get him out of this Get, how to get him out of his, wor his world get them out of his world and away from him for good 
Yeah. Would that be possible, though? You can be sure. He was able to take 15 steps, however, before the sound feet. He heard the sound of feet from landing firmly on the ground behind him. His blood went cold. He turned to see one of those men in their typical uniforms looking at him with a suspicious grin. Giving his quest to chase, hunch you, you tipper. The man asked the dog simply, asked the dog simply, raising a curious eyebrow. What do you want? The dog demanded firmly. Should he run from this man? Could he outrun him? Was it worth a try? The man shook his head with a chuckle. He'll see soon enough. No, the dog said simply, lifting his chin. I'm not gonna going anywhere with you until I have some answers. Where's the fun in that? The man said with a laugh. I love it when our enemies are left guessing. So does our leader. Mr. A? The man, dog asked, raising an eyebrow. So you have heard of him? He <laughs> said excitedly. No, I just heard your, one of your guys mention him. <laughs> the dog said brutally. Well, that's a shame. The man sighed. But you really don't have much of a choice. Actually, I do. The dog replied. And since you won't be giving me the answers I want, then I'll find someone else who will. Not if I can help it, the man sneered and suddenly lunged toward the dog. The young canine dodged out of the way, the man's way, and ran down the path as fast as he could, daring not to look behind him, knowing the man would be on, hot, on a hot pursuit. Can't run from us forever, YouTuber! The man shouted as the dog kept going. He dared not stop. He could not stop. We'll find you, just as we have with all your fellow kind. You have to catch me first, dog hollered back, heart racing as he forced himself to go faster, weaving through the buildings surrounding them, not paying too much attention to the fact that he was possibly running for his life. Wait, wait. Weaving through the buildings surrounding them, not paying too much attention to the fact that he was possibly running for his life. Okay. <laughs> he couldn't get distracted. He needed to find someone to help him. Oh, this place looked deserted. And for all I knew, no one lived here. As he kept running, he could hear the man's feet pounding loudly behind him, his mind raising with possible ideas for how to escape this man. Should he run into one of the buildings and hide? Would the man get fooled that easily? He knew he couldn't keep this up forever, but how long could this guy last? Could he outrun him? It was possible. As soon as that thought came to mind, Idea formed in the dog as the dog managed a small smile. He re reached down into his pocket to try and grab something. But he was doing though, so, he hadn't noticed the staircase in front of him as he tripped over it, falling on the path of the ground as he attempted to get back to his feet. Suddenly he noticed something flying through the air, a projectile of some kind, and the man shouted in alarm. It took him a moment to realize that someone or something throwing snowballs at the man pursuing him, forcing him to retreat. The dog watched in astonishment. The man looked absolutely horrified as he disappeared around the corner, leaving him sitting there on the path stunned. What had just happened? What was he missing? <laughs> the moment of surprise died down fairly quickly when he saw his rescuer jump down from the top of one of the buildings. The reindeer was a pink yellow floral scarf. Expressive brown eyes looked more curious than frightened. Intrigued as to what she saw before her as she approached him. Hello? The dog finally asked as she smiled at him, cheerfully holding out a hand for him to take. The dog hesitated. How do I know I can trust you? She raised an eyebrow curiously as the dog let out his eye, realizing he really didn't have much of a choice. She had just helped him after all, and no doubt he needed all the help he could get right now. The dog took her hand and she helped him to his feet. The dog brushed himself off simply. So, mind telling me your name? <laughs> she smiled and shook her head, pointing to her mouth as if trying to tell him something. Finally, he understood. No, sorry about that, son. I didn't know. <laughs> oh. She shrugged it off as she gestured for him to follow her. He decided it would be better if he did what she said as he nodded, telling her he would. He knew that he didn't ever truly have much of a choice. He didn't want to be alone out here in this place in case if that man or any more of his allies tried coming back. It was much better to be around people who could help than be on his own. 
even if they were skilled at throwing snowballs at incoming wrestlers. He can help a cricket play on that thought. Things definitely would get more interesting now. He had a chance with these men, and they would regret it. Mr. He was sure of that. But I read one more. <laughs> Chapter 3. As the dog and the reindeer walked down the path, he couldn't help but notice all the unique details that surrounded him on every side. Everything looked different and refreshing. Though there were room for improvement, he really liked what he saw. It looked rather lovely. <laughs> they had rounded a few corners as they continued onwards. The dog noticed the reindeer glancing around at their surroundings with slight unease. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary, but he didn't blame her reaction. The silence surrounding them only seemed to grow as they continued on. The path was empty on either side of them. There was no one following them. No threats were possibly lurking behind buildings or on the roofs of various styles that were available. Well, none that they were aware of. The only thing that seemed to reassure him was the reindeer's growing calmness. Wherever they were going, it seemed to be better than being out in the open. In fact, it probably was better. The dog looked straight ahead at the, of them, noticing that they were heading toward the building that appeared to be in a work in progress. Not quite complete. You could also see some figures near the building as well. The thought of those men nearby unnerved him, not knowing what the reindeer was leading him to. Are you sure this is a good idea? The dog asked nervously, glancing over at the reindeer, who gave him a swift, subtle, but understanding nod. His direction. The dog let her inside, realizing there was no point arguing. He had to trust her. As, he approached, as they approached, the dog was able to see the figures more clearly. The base of the build was a young boy at around 17 or 18, standing next to, the do to a dog. He wiped his tail when he saw the approaching arrivals. There were three other figures up on the top of the building that he couldn't quite identify, but the golden brown haired boy with blue with blue eyes was unmistakable. He approached them. I don't <laughs> what? Okay. Well, nice seeing two of you throw by, the boy said cheerfully, looking between the reindeer and the dog. Looks like you made a new friend there, Polly. Right <laughs> there or Polly? Nodded, matter of factly, with a bemused smile. The dog noticed her gesture at him briefly, as he wondered if she was encouraging him to introduce himself. Sorry I dropped by, dropped in and uninvited, I guess. The dog finally said she was telling. Had a few incidents that occurred. Well, looks like you made it out okay, the boy said simply, holding out a hand. I'm Sam. What about you? Danny. The dog said with a smile. Taking the boy's hand as he shook it. It was the nicest gesture he had seen in a while. It was nice. Well, Danny, why don't you come with me and I can introduce you to my friends? The boy said cheerfully, gesturing for him to follow. What about those men? Danny asked. Won't they find us? You mean Mr. A's men? The boy said asked curiously. What do you know about them? Not much. Just that they wanted me for something. YouTuber related. The dog replied meekly. That's all right. I'm sure we can answer those questions you're dying to ask. The boy mused. Still, there's no need to worry. We're already in he on high alert as is. If those, if those guys come back, we'll be ready for them. You sure? Danny asked. Positive. The boy replied. Now, come on. I'd like to introduce you to some people. Danny sighed and did what he was told. Following the boy back to the building, probably not too far behind. He knew it was better to make friends, but it had been a while since he'd been around people, so he was reasonably nervous about about the idea. Still, everything seemed to be fine. Nothing felt off in the slightest. It felt comfortable, relaxing, and even welcoming. A welcoming atmosphere. Not a thing to be afraid of. It didn't take long for them to arrive at the base of the build. It was a simple design, was full of color, and small details that Danny couldn't help but notice. So far, it looked pretty good. It looked like it would fit into an aesthetic of the building surrounding. It wasn't too different, nor too similar. It was right in the middle, which was very nice. 
I had a feeling it would be better once it was completed. <sighs> What's going on here? A voice asked suddenly from above. That's the dog. Who <laughs> looked up to see someone jump down from one of the lower points of the bit wall, revealing an orange ginger cap, bright green eyes, and fresh, shiny iron boots. A curious smile rested on his face, no doubt wondering what had happened within the last few moments. Um, it's a long story, Danny admitted before anyone could jump in. I haven't really told these guys what happened. Eh, all right. The camera played with a nod. Maybe we should go inside and talk about all about it there. Another voice asked from behind us. Danny jumped as he turned to see a yellow duckling with a big expression of all shut and blue eyes looking back at them. That's actually a good idea, Squishy, Sam said matter-of-factly. Is that okay with you, Danny? I suppose, Danny said with a shrug. Guys, don't mind. Oh, of course we don't mind, the cat said with a laugh. We're friends here, after all, aren't we? I would assume so. The dog replied with a chuckle as they all entered a nearby building to discuss everything that had happened. The cat, whom he later found out was Stampy, <laughs> seemed okay with him staying here for a short while. But Sam was going to talk about his arrival to someone far for a more permanent location to him it would be safer that way he was okay with that not wanting to put anyone else in danger but it didn't stop him from feeling a little sad that he would probably be parting from his new friends soon he respected their decisions though he trusted them to do what was best for everyone it was the least he could do for his new friends <laughs> my nose is a little dry at the moment all of a sudden? I'm okay. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that little first part. And I will be reading more. I think they're about to get interesting. And yeah. Pretty much. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next part. Be sure you be there. Because you don't want to miss it. Goodbye.